In part two of this video series, we hard plumbed the tubs and pumps, installed the return emitters, and built a return manifold. In this episode, I will prepare the filter media, finish the stealth box internal plumbing, fill her up, flip the switch, and hold my breath. The seamless sump filter media baskets are designed to act like canister filter baskets with all the flow provided only by gravity. The baskets will set snug into each other when they stack, and water cannot get out between the baskets. With the top basket above the water line in the baffle tub, all the water will pass through the media by force of gravity. The fired ceramic media is rough enough to grow strong colonies of bacteria, but not porous enough to trap debris that will only become an organic waste sink. If you are not familiar with my understanding of how biomedia should work with regular cleaning of the media, I will put a link in a card here to a video about it. I use about two cups of media in each basket. It is pretty dusty when it first comes out of the bucket, so it needs a good rinse before you use it. The bottom basket sets on a pair of raised ledges in the bottom of the baffle tub, so the bottom of the basket is open for water to flow through. The baskets sit in on top of each other one at a time. Make sure that the bottoms are fully seated in the tops of the baskets below them. If four baskets are used, the top of the stack will be out of the water, but the media will be submerged. A fifth basket will fit, but the media will be totally out of the water. Some people like to get a drip plate in a fifth basket and have a wet dry setup, but I don't do that. When I want to use chemical media like Purigen or Chemipure, I put it in the second basket from the top so that it is totally submerged. My stealth box is set up with two drains that have valves and one without. Now I will show you how the inside of the box is set up and explain how the system works. Basically, you can use the stealth box to set up a BN Animal or Herbie style overflow system. Here is a demonstration stealth box with the back cut off so you can see the plumbing. I am using what I call a modified BN Animal system with two valves instead of one and without a Durso on the secondary drain. Here's how it works. The primary drain gets the shortest standpipe. I like it to be as tall as the top of the flow through the bulkhead. Once the water is flowing, I will close the valve below the standpipe until the water rises over the standpipe and enters the secondary drain. I want the top of this short standpipe to always be totally under water. The secondary drain has a taller standpipe. The valve under this pipe will set the goal water level in the box, which I want to be just above the lip of the secondary standpipe. I want that standpipe full of water so it will not slurp air. The way that I will hopefully set that goal water level is to close the secondary valve until the water rises up to the edge of the emergency drain, then open the secondary valve a bit so the water level drops again until the goal water level is reached. Then I will barely close the secondary valve and hope that the water level is stable. If the water level slowly drops, I will barely close off the primary and or secondary valves until the level rises again. And if the water level rises too high, I will barely open the valves. It may take a few days of fiddling the valves to get it right. But thanks to the emergency drain, there should never be a flood. The first thing I fill are the sumps, and I fill them from the sock tub side and just let the water flow through the system. This way I can look for leaks before filling the tank. There's one, easy enough to fix with a bulkhead wrench. I only tighten it enough to stop the leak. <laughs> I may not have tightened that at all. While the sump and tank are filling, I will do a bit of scaping, mostly just to get it all in the tank. The final aquascape will not happen until this wood sinks, 
and I have some other pieces prepped to go in. Sump should be about full, so now let's fill up the tank. As the tank is filling, I am walking around being nervous as heck, hooking up pump controllers, double checking overflows, looking for leaky bulkheads tightening leaky bulkheads, and pretty much being too nervous to film anything well. Sorry. The tank is not full until the water makes it from the overflows to the filter system. And then it is time to step back and turn off the water. Then with all the valves wide open and everything perfectly still, you flip the switch. On one pump and then make sure it's all functioning. This one looks good. Siphon stopper emitters, functioning. Water's flowing through the overflows and the stealth box. Okay to plug in the second pump. Pump is running and pushing a lot of flow through that emitter. Double check the overflows, they're really rocking now. After letting everything run full bore for a few minutes and double checking for leaks, it's time to adjust the stealth box overflow. The first step is to close off the primary valve until the water rises over the primary drain. When the water starts flowing into the secondary drain, I close off the secondary valve. When the water starts to rise towards the emergency valve, I open the secondary valve a little bit. When the water level is stable and above the secondary drain pipe, the stealth box is set. The H2 overflow that is not on the stealth box is a little noisy, so I install the noise reducing grommet. This piece of rubber restricts the flow into the overflow just enough so the air does not get sucked into it. The last step for tonight is to install the glass canopies on the seamless sump system. The seamless sump filter system and everything that goes with it is set up and running on the Custom Aquarium's 265 gallon aquarium. I finished this project late last night and everything was working just fine. I went to bed for about five hours and I came down. I'm always a little worried on projects like this of what I'm going to find. But what I found was everything working exactly the way I left it. That was a huge relief. Today's tasks are going to be to fine tune the filter system, to adjust the flow of the pumps, add a heater. Uh, get some lights over top of the tank, get some glass canopies over it, uh, mess with the aquascaping a little bit, but this wood is still a little bit buoyant, so it's going to be a while before I can really get it dialed in the way I want it. All that kind of stuff I will put into the next episode of the 265 gallon series. If you like this type of programming, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications when I put up new videos. And as always, Thanks for watching Ted's Fish Room.